Hey, back again with another showcase video and this time I'm going to be showing you the toaster. What this one does is basically put on a show for us. I will feed it um, 10 stacks of anything and those 10 stacks are thrown up the wall in front of us and this does not use an exploit of any type. This is just a, a cavity in the wall. So I saw some comments on the proof of concept that I showed where people speculated that maybe I'm using that old exploit. That's not what's happening here. Um, and then this progress bar up here on top tells us how far along those 10 stacks are in their processing. So once that gets full that'll tell us we've got all 10 stacks in there and then it will take until this is depleted for those 10 stacks to be moved to the furnace arrays. So once this gets to, to empty, 10 seconds will need to go by for the smelting process and then our items will be returned to this chest here and this indicator see how the floor closed right there once those are done processing this will open indicating that the system is ready for us to throw in our next batch of materials so that's empty that opens we can now throw something else in this time I'm just going to do three stacks and now we have both the items that we put in just a minute ago returning to us and the next batch shooting up into the system. This batch is shooting up into the system at 8x hopper speed and each of these chests is returning our items at 4x hopper speed. And here you'll see the indicator lights that tell us how far along that most recent batch is. Once it's empty that batch will be fully processed. The door will open and we can throw something else in. This time we'll just do one stack. The minimum amount of items you can feed this thing is eight. You need to throw in at least eight items to make sure the, um, the input detector has been triggered so it knows that, they're, that items have been put into the machine. So we'll do eight. There, now it's open. We'll do eight on this one just to show but it can do that few, so it's anywhere between eight items and ten full stacks that this can handle at a given time. And the pro this light might not even turn on for eight, or it'll just briefly turn on. Yeah, really quick. And then that'll open up, indicating that we can throw more in now. And then those eight in ten seconds will come back down into these chests, and we'll have all of our smelted items back. And now we'll look at the redstone. There's a lot going on here, so I'm not really sure where to start. <laughs> um, the uh, we'll st I guess we'll start from the very beginning. Once the items are placed into the chest, they are pulled into two hopper mine carts beneath the chest, which are positioned over eight hoppers, and that's where we get our 8x hopper speed. And those eight hoppers are divided further and further until they reach eight dropper chains down here. There's four there and four there, and all of these dropper chains come together right here at the bubble column, and these are all activated by observer clocks. You can see right here, um, these pistons push these observers up, which activate the clocks, and then there are observers positioned around that um, trigger the drop dropper chains. So as these items are pushed into the bubble column, they fly up the bubble column, their momentum carries them up the cavity in front of the viewing space, that's how we get that effect of the items flying up the wall, and then they're caught up here by another water column, pushed aside into another vertical column, carried the rest of the way up to, let's see if you can see this here, uh, to sideways flowing water channels that funnel them back together into two hopper mine carts, so everything's recombined up here at just about 50-50. It's not quite exactly 50-50, but almost exactly half the items wind up in this one, and almost exactly half the items wind up in this one. It's close enough to being 50-50 that it, it doesn't really make a difference. And then once the system detects that all the items have been recollected here, this piston system activates. This is a these two uh, redstone blocks on top activate the activator rails, and I'm sorry, they activate the powered rails, and then this, these uh, terracotta blocks push forward. See that's all held together by a slime block. These push forward becoming the solid block against which the carts need to be placed in order for 
the, the powered rails to start moving them. So those both move forward at the exact same time. I'll show that in just a minute. And then each cart separates and travels over here to a system that pushes the, the hopper mine cart onto the middle of four hoppers so that the items are taken out at 4x hopper speed. And that's done using this piston here that pushes uh, iron bars into the side of the cart and that, that's just enough block width to put it right in the middle. And then the timing on this is such that these powered rails deactivate, stopping these hopper mine carts right beneath the four hoppers underneath that, and they are then given all the items to be spread out across the arrays. And we have a total of four banks uh, with two furnace arrays under each, so eight total furnace arrays, each with 25 furnaces for a total of 200 furnaces. And I'll demonstrate that now so we can see everything moving. We'll throw something in here. Those fly up the wall at 8x hopper speed. You can see them moving up the second bubble column and then converging on these two hopper minecarts. And then as soon as those are full, those pistons will move forward. Okay, so that moves those over and then that piston pushes it into the middle. And this is emptied at 4x hopper speed. And then once the items have completed flowing through here, there's a comparator. You can't really, man, it's really buried. There's a comparator back there that can detect when the last item flows through, and that will activate this double piston extender that pushes the cart back onto its track, and it moves up back into its home location. And those are both reset now, so the system is ready to receive more items. We could throw something else in now, and they would start moving up and processing. And these bar, this bar here, I added this because the amount of time that it takes for the items to start um, start being returned to you varies by the size of the batch. So if it's a really big batch, it might take a while. Um, I mean, it's not a very long time, but it's just enough that you start to wonder if the system is working. So that indicator bar tells us how long this process right here takes. Because once, uh, once you've put 10 stacks of items into the system, you can't put any more items into the system until these hopper minecarts have returned to where they are right now. Otherwise, they'll just pool up on top of the water right here, and they don't get evenly distributed between the hopper minecarts um, if they're not in place when you put the items into the system. So that's what that, those indicator bars do. You'll see here that the indicator bars are filling up. And let's see if I can position myself right. Once they're full, there they see the hopper minecarts have moved down here. So there, you cannot put new items in the system yet because the hopper mine carts haven't returned to their starting location. So this is effectively your countdown until those carts are back where they belong. Once this reaches zero, it tells us that these carts have returned back up there and we can put items into the system again. It has nothing to do with the amount of time it takes to smelt the items. It has everything to do with whether or not these carts have returned back to the starting location. And there they are. And see there, the, the lights are empty, the carts are back where they belong, and the floor has opened up. So you might be wondering, why 25 furnaces per array? Why not 50 or 100 or whatever number you want? And we can actually calculate the most efficient number of furnaces given our return method is a hopper chain. So this hopper chain transfers items at 2.5 items per second and in order to make sure the system doesn't back up and continues running efficiently we have to calculate the speed that items can flow out of this hopper chain versus the speed that the furnaces smelt items at. So 10 seconds per item means it will be 10 seconds until the next item drops down then 10 seconds till the next item drops down so once this item drops into here it needs to have cleared the entire furnace array within 10 seconds. If it doesn't, then we'll still have items in the, in the hopper chain when the next batch is dropped back down and the system starts backing up and we lose efficiency. And there you have it. I'll do one more demonstration here. And let me know in the comments if you want to see an even more in-depth explanation of this. There's actually still a lot to show. Like, getting the light bar to round these corners was a huge, huge challenge. Um, my wife and I spent like an entire evening figuring out how to wire this properly. 
um, so that the lights turned on in succession. There's all of these constraints to work around, like we're right up against the water column here, so that limits where we can put redstone. Um, you can see I've used a whole bunch of comparators uh, in a really goofy, weird fashion, just to just around this corner. That's all that does. <laughs> um, how that light bar fills up and how it unfills uh, is pretty unique. And there's another similar deal over here because the system has to basically weigh the input every time. Every time you put something in, it has to weigh the input. Um, so it knows how long to keep this door closed. Um, how long to wait until the system is ready to receive a new input. So you can see we've put in the full 10 stacks here so it waits the maximum amount of time before reopening these doors and then if we only put in three or four items, well we can't do three or four, if we only put in eight items, um, we'll do eight here again, if we only put in eight items it's only open briefly because the size of the load is weighed, that closes and then because it's only eight items, that light will just turn on briefly. And then that'll open right back up again, and it's ready to receive the next batch. So there's some more stuff to show. Um, I could even go <laughs> into the many stages that I went through optimizing this, tons of different designs, until finally arriving at what worked. Hope you like it. I'll put a world download in the description and uh, stay tuned for more. There's two more upgrades that I'm going to be adding to this. Um, an overflow protection. Right now if you feed it 12 stacks instead of the maximum of 10, it'll take all 12 and clog itself up. So I need to install an overflow protection down there so that the uh, anything more than 10 stacks is held in limbo until it catches up and then those next stacks would be processed. Um, and then I'd like to add an XP collection method. I think that'd be kind of cool. <laughs> if you're in a pinch, you can lock all these hoppers down here and then come collect the XP um, from each hopper, or from each furnace. That'd be kind of cool. But uh, that'll be a later video, and I've got a couple more builds to do showcases on before that that I'll be releasing uh, sometime in the coming weeks. So if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.